Have you ever wondered about the lesser-known daughters of Adam and Eve? Overshadowed by the more famous story of Cain and Abel in the Bible, in order to uncover the unseen story of these underappreciated individuals, we delve into the depths of ancient books and customs in this investigation. Sons and daughters born to Adam and Eve after Seth are mentioned in passing in the Bible, which makes us wonder about their identities and the roles they played in influencing the early history of humanity. We hope to shed light on these daughters' lives and draw attention to the sometimes overlooked aspect of the first family by using resources such as the Book of Jubilees. What tales from old Jewish traditions describe these daughters, and who were they? Did they make as much of an impact as their more famous brothers? Come explore the fascinating history of Adam and Eve's daughters with us as we peel back the layers of time. There is a story to be unearthed inside the pages of Old Wisdom. Don't forget to subscribe to Ancient History for fascinating insights into the mysteries of the ancient world and captivating historical narratives. The mystery surrounding the daughters of Adam and Eve is a subject seldom discussed and frequently disregarded by theologians, biblical experts, and even the general public with an interest in sacred literature. When reading the Bible, most people concentrate on the two most well-known sons of Adam and Eve, Abel, the second son, and Cain, the firstborn. Nevertheless, they frequently overlook the fact that Adam and Eve had a large number of daughters, since the biblical account in Genesis chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 provides fascinating details regarding Adam's sons and daughters. According to the Bible, Adam lived for 800 years after giving birth to Seth, during which he fathered sons and daughters, giving him a total of 930 years until he passed away. The names of Adam and Eve's daughters are not given in the Bible, although some of their names are mentioned in other writings from antiquated Jewish customs. So, according to these antiquated Jewish customs, the names of some of Adam and Eve's daughters are included in the Book of Jubilees, providing insights into these lesser-known characters. Avon was the name of their first daughter, according to a number of early Semitic Abrahamic legends. In Phoenician Hebrew, the word Avon means potency, or simply vice. As a result, she was Cain's sister and wife. Cain was the son of Adam and Eve. Enoch was the name of one of the children she bore Cain, according to the Book of Jubilees. One of Cain's accomplishments after being banished because he killed Abel is stated in the Bible as being the building of a city named after his son. Named after his son, the city was given the name Enoch. The Book of Jubilees and other Abrahamic writings make reference to a woman named Avon. She goes by Kalima, though, in some of these books, like the Cave of Treasures. According to these legends, Kalima was therefore Adam and Eve's first daughter and Cain's bride. Azura was Adam and Eve's second daughter, according to a number of Old Semitic customs. Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, born after Abel's death, was married to Azura. The name Seth's origin is Hebrew, and the idea of replacement or compensation may be implied by its meaning. This is significant because, following Abel's death by his brother Cain, Adam and Eve looked to Seth to replace Abel's heavenly reward. He is regarded as a holy and blameless descendant, and the biblical story implies that people will continue to serve God through his bloodline. Seth's lineage is also noteworthy in the Bible because it leads to Noah, who was essential to both the account of the flood and humanity's survival. In the genealogical chain connecting the genesis of humanity to later events and significant personalities in the Judeo-Christian faith, Seth and his wife Azura were therefore a link. An intriguing element found in the Book of Jubilees is that Azura was Abel's first wife and only became a widow after his passing. Seth married Azura after he reached adulthood, and their union produced the lineage of Seth and Seth himself, who became the first patriarch of this dynasty. According to the Book of Jubilees, Azura married her brother Seth in the fifth week of the fifth Jubilee after being born in the sixth week of the fourth Jubilee. She gave birth to a son, Enos, in the sixth week of the fourth year. 
After Enos grew up, he got married to Noam, his sister, and Seth and Azura's daughter, during the third week of the seventh jubilee. One of Seth and Azura's sons, Enos, is renowned for his pious lineage and unwavering commitment to worshipping God. Cain therefore married his sister Avon and created the Cain line, according to Semitic Jewish tradition and the Old Book of Jubilees. On the other side, Seth created the Seth lineage by marrying his sister Azura. The number of boys and daughters that Adam and Eve had may have been on your mind. The biblical story suggests that they had a large number of sons and girls, which makes sense given that Adam lived for more than eight centuries. Adam and Eve were, in actuality, the most fertile people in history. As the first woman, Eve was extraordinarily fruitful, and Adam was similarly prolific. Consequently, during their lives, they had hundreds and hundreds of sons and daughters, in accordance with these antiquated customs. Valentina Vasiliev was the lady who, as far as we know, held the record for having the most children in human history, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. According to reports, she was 76 years old when she passed away, leaving 69 surviving children, just two of whom died young. Valentina Vasiliev had 27 pregnancies in total, giving birth to 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quadruplets, according to Guinness World Records. Although there are numerous accounts of ladies having as many as 50 or even 60 children, Valentina Vasiliev is still the acknowledged record holder. A lesser known fact is that, because Adam and Eve were initially of mixed race, both of their sons and daughters had their own ethnic heritage. As a result, humanity's ethnic diversity increased. Although it includes a wide range of ethnicities and races, all people may trace their ancestry back to Adam and Eve. This theory is supported by research on mitochondrial DNA, or mitochondrial Eve, which shows that despite the racial and ethnic variety of the modern world, all humans have a common ancestor. Thus, the mitochondrial genetic investigation demonstrated that all individuals share a common ancestor and are descended from the same woman, adding to the richness of racial and ethnic variation in our world. For those who are not aware, the Book of Jubilees is sometimes referred to as the Little Genesis because of its association with the joyous term Jubilee. It covers the history of several Old Testament figures, as well as the creation of the world and Adam and Eve's development following the fall. It is a component of the Old Testament Apocrypha. The earliest manuscript we have access to is not particularly recent. It is from about 700 BCE. Still, this paper is a replication of an even earlier piece. Some academics propose that the author of the Book of Jubilees may have been the scribe Ezra, by connecting it to the Book of Chronicles. But according to the Book of Jubilees, Moses wrote the book after receiving a revelation from an angel while atop Mount Horeb. It is interesting to remember that Moses was in God's presence for 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Horeb, while he went without food or water. Historically, we cannot rule out the idea that Moses was the true author of the Torah because of its antiquity. Many copies of the Book of Jubilees are widely dispersed among Israelites, giving it a prominent place in Israeli culture. It also makes reference to the Book of Enoch, another enigmatic apocryphal work that was well known to early Christians and even included their canon of scripture. This emphasizes how crucial it is to read the Book of Jubilees carefully since it describes occurrences that correspond with biblical narrative. That's all for this video. We'll be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. To keep exploring ancient history together, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time!